What's going on guys? So it's been a while since I've done one of these discussion videos. The Writers Guild of America, the WGA, and Screen Actors Guild, SAG, are all striking right now. The DGA, the Directors Guild of, of America, gratefully they were able to work out a deal between, between the Directors Guild and the studio, but Writers and Actors are striking Fran Drescher of the Nanny Fan is president of SAG and she made an impassioned speech about the difficulties of even trying to negotiate with Hollywood and if you haven't seen uh, Fran Drescher's speech it's on YouTube go look go look at him after this video it is really powerful um this uh, this dual strength is historic for many reasons and I'm making a video about it because I've seen a lot of misconceptions floating around the internet surprise surprise and I figured a guy wearing a pirate clothing Caribbean shirt should uh, set <laughs> things straight you know At the time of recording this, the writers have been striking for almost a hundred days, and the actors Gillens has been striking for about three weeks, maybe a bit more. Uh, but before I go any further into the into this situation, I think you guys should know more about me and my and my background. My mom. Will, worked in George's staged theater community for nearly 30 years as a costumer. Um, she's retiring from it now, but Georgia Shakespeare, where she worked for 30 years, um, was my second home. I, I, I've, I've seen the process of a constant idea from script all the way to uh, the performance on stage. So I know how this process works. I know a ton of, of people striking right now because in Atlanta, LA, and New York, a bunch of actors and writers and production assistants are striking right now. My best friend is a production assistant in New York. And just to be clear, I am not a member of either the Guild, SAG, or WGA, so I have no uh, stake in the negotiations, so I don't have any, you know, reason necessarily to make this video, but for a couple reasons, I wanted to make this video. One, to sort of clear a few things up about Mostly about SAG, I've seen a lot of weird misconceptions on the internet. Um, when the uh, writers began to strike, um, um, I saw a lot of concerning comments spreading around the internet. Hmm. Namely, we'll be set now, so why should writers be paid? So stupid. Um, uh, people should learn to dream better. All that kind of bullcrap, to be completely honest, and the truth of the matter is, movies don't suck right now at all. I mean, didn't everyone love Mario or Top Gun Maverick or John Wick Chapter 4? These are all Writers Guild affiliated productions. You know, I mean, just because the aspect of some movies aren't great doesn't mean that people who were, who weren't shouldn't be paying more. I mean, come on, man. When people think of these games, whether it's the DGA, WGA, SAG, they tend to think of, like, the most famous people in the world. They think of... They think of Brad Pitt or Keanu Reeves or George Clooney. 
Tom Cruise, Denzel Washington, they think of these mega rich celebrities, incredibly successful celebrities, but those are not the only people that are part of SAG. There are people right here in Georgia, my friend, mostly my friends who are members of SAG, who, who do work like a bartender role or a customer at a restaurant, like a background extra. All right. Not everyone is uh, sad. Someone, some people are non union or saying eligible, but there are plenty of actors who are part of that union that do not have a livable wage, not even close. It is. It's honestly disgusting. And when it comes to the, the, the writers, they are historically undervalued. I mean, my God. Let's say, for example, Buddy, the, the screenwriter, they have done countless rewrites on films that came really close to happening, unpaid, and every single time they worked for months and months and months on scripts with producers who are millionaires who wanted to get one of Buddy's films made, but Buddy ne never saw the set and was treated by Trash the whole time. None of their work was spent in it, and they were constantly asked to do the most insane, stupefying your right that would blow your mind. Let me get, give you a real life example. Two years ago, David S. Goyer, comic book you know, writer, comic book movie writer, extraordinary. Batman Begins, Man of Steel, sat down in a lengthy chat with the Hollywood reporter. He revealed a baffling script note given to him by Warner Brothers. Quote, when now I was given a Man of Steel was, was where the Indian involves Superman utilizing the pod that he arrived in as a Trying to bring down General Zan's ship, Goyer said. It continues. The note from the studio said, You had to change that. We asked why they said, Because if Superman uses the pond and it's destroyed, we'll see in the city how it is ever going to get back home to Krypton. There were just this long pause, and, and we said, Krypton blew up. You saw him. You, you saw that in the first 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah, yes, the studio had such a lack of understanding about Superman that they had that he needed his ship to uh, go back to Krypton. Putting the... I said the fact his planet will be destroyed is a pivotal part of the beginning of the movie and the, and the comic books they come from. He can fly. And the executive saw it in the rough cut, and they still didn't get it. This is totally normal for writers to go through, through. and they go through the scrap all the time. They, they said they're trying to figure out how, how to get a film in it because they love this, and they love movies so much, and they constantly had to deal with people who are far richer and far more powerful than they are to. Man, that happened, and and so there is a constant state of placating someone who is considered better than them, who and who knows, and, and will use that mentality that they are powerful and better than them to control a writer and make them feel. Like trash, and it happens all the time.
But I think the WGA and SAG agree uh, on this. And the biggest thing and the number one reason I went, wanted to make this video that is extremely alarming about what Hollywood was proposing to SAG and what SAG said no, no way on earth was the idea of owning a background actress of things di digitally. So, so in a movie, if you have a crowd scene and you need a bunch of people to fill out a room, that's background actress in the past. They were sometimes referred to as actress, which is somewhat a um, meaning title. So background actress sounds a bit better. Uh, These are people that make your chat look good, that they, they fill it out. So you see when you're in a real space, especially in big movies when you're at stores or events or at a concert or something along those lines. Background actors are absolutely necessary in some cases. It's CGI like a battlefield in Troy or Lord of the, of the Rings or Game of Thrones, something like that. That, that's understandable. But, but according to SAG, what the studios were proposing was that they would like to hire a, a background editor for one day work, meaning a day rate, whatever. It, it might probably be in somewhere around the range of two to three hundred dollars scan their likeness and excuse them for from work and not ever need them ever again but then and this the scary part the students would own that actor's likeness forever and they could just keep using that that digital likeness of, of somebody in the background scenes of well, all their movies when that, everything they want to like a like a Photoshop asset. Oh. Not that I need an, 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 an analogy for how crazy that, that is, but I'm gonna do it any, anyway. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck started out as background actors when one of their first gigs was Field of Dreams in the Fenway Park scene. If that technology had existed then. They, w they would have been scanned and then excused after one day's work, probably paying a hundred dollars. Their likeness, they, they, they likely would not have picked up any more background work since their likeness would be available digitally. That, that wouldn't mean it would be harder for them to get more things, which probably will mean. No born identity. No gun, baby gun. No, um, Argo. No, no Goodwill hunting. No Oscars. No best supporting actor Oscar for Robin Williams. None of that probably wouldn't have happened because their careers would have ended. And then, then and there, and there, because they send their likenesses away in, in a second to some studio that doesn't give a crap about them. Andy Serkis uh, spoke on this recently. Quote, it's fair to say I am the most uh, skinned actor on the planet, so I know that you do run the risk of not only, uh, of not only your image, but your Libraries of movie can can be used in other movies without your knowledge. More recent actual examples include the documentaries Roadrunner with Anthony Bourdain or the Stanley documentary on Disney Plus. James Earl Jones just last year um, signed his voice away. So, Darth Vader could live on through AI. 
I can't believe that an actor would be degraded, degraded to that level. These are people that who make movies happen. Writers are just important. In fact, more important. Without a writer, you don't have a movie. Writers, directors, actors, and especially crew, your electricians, your set decorators, your set PAs, your sound people, etc., are the pe people who who get these movies made. All of these mega rich people who are they just profiting from the fact that other people are were working very hard for them are terrified of losing like two percent of their money and it's absolutely hilarious to be honest. One day a very good comedy and they spent a very brief studio, probably at 824, <laughs> will be made, made about these past few months. I think it's really easy to look at these strengths from a surface level and just think, well, saying it's just me me mega famous people, right? And Jolene or Jolene or whatever. And it's, and it's, no, it's not, not like that. It's, it's everyday working people who love there are in their craft who who just can't get in the industry. It's it's the same with writers. I mean, not every writer is Aaron Sorkin. There are ten people who just struggling to get anything made. Who can barely afford to make a living in Los Angeles or New York. This is why in the cast of Oppenheimer. We have the premiere in solidarity the SAG because all, all of them were starting actors once to they all don't know what it feels like to be a struggling actor. Not a single one, one, one of them was just burped into being famous and incredibly, and incredibly talented. So this is what we're dealing with. And the second thing I would really like to talk about, and I wish more people understand understood this, is that I mean you had to understand that former strengths are why writers have health care and, and why certain things that you look at as normal nowadays is because somebody. Back in the day, back in the day, didn't get paid for a long time. Went on, went on a strike, and that's exactly what this strike is going to do for Anders and Anders at some point in the future, 30, 30 years from now. There's going to be, there's going to be a very normal thing that everyone, everyone has because. These strengths, it might not seem like that right now. It might seem like it's taking a while, but in the but in the future, the people who are reaping the benefits of, of the strength are going to be very happy that this strength is happening. Those, those are my thoughts on on this craziness. No, but but and I understand once a strike to happen, I don't think so anyway. Um, but it's what it has to happen. Anders and the Andrews need to be compensated fairly, but even beyond that, they had to be respected. All these new tools that AI has created and in some ways can be truly useful. Just like anything that we ever create, we will always abuse it somehow and that's the really scary part. We had to be very careful and the lines had to be drawn because if a studio gets their way with replacing that grant of actors and I guess what else gets cut, catering gets cut, wardrobe jobs get cut, rentals for holding spaces get cut, additional crew, all these Departments get cut, kind of, it just happens, a domino effect will start, and the entire industry gets gutted.
And one more thing. I was watching an interview a few weeks back that Chet Todd from Meet the Press connected with Christopher Nolan and several scientists in the field of AI were also present in the interview. And no, no one said this. When I talk to the leading researchers in the field of AI right now, For example, they literally refer to right now, this right now, is their Oppenheimer moment. They are looking to history to say, what are the responsibilities for scientists de de developing this new technologies that may have unintended consequences? So, you know, that's all I gotta say about this. This, uh, guys, thank you so much for, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And until next time, I will, I will see you very soon. Preview.